So some of the big nutrients that I can think of off the bat in our top 10 list is zinc. So zinc's a really important one. It's going to be found in a lot of animal products, nuts, seeds, seafood, and that's going to have a major effect on our immune system. And um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have an effect on testosterone. It's going to have an effect on testosterone um, and hydrochloric acid and our hormones. It plays a very vital role. We have what's called zinc fingers, which affects our DNA. Adequate levels of zinc have a major effect on our epigenetics and our DNA. So zinc would probably be our number one I think on, on the nutrient side, anything else you want to highlight on zinc or anything else? No, I would say that vitamin C is probably going to be number two though. Yeah. That wasn't your number two. I agree. They're actually doing studies on COVID-19 and vitamin C right now in China as we speak. So that is something that's real. And they're actually looking at that already. And we know that they're buying lots of vitamin C for a lot of these reasons preventively. So we know intuitively something's happening there. I'm going to be very curious to see what the study pans out over the next couple of months in this. Yep. Uh, I, I don't think this is going to be in the nutrient category, but it's kind of both, right? Because it is it, it is sort of an immune support, but it also does modulate things. And it would be a stragglus route. And I personally stay on a stragglus pretty much year round, but I go higher dosing in the spring and summertime in case I get tick bites. But there's been some studies shown that uh, when it comes to the herpes simplex virus, HSV-1, uh, it was found to inhibit that virus. Another study showed that it inhibits the RNA replication that you were talking about. So it seems like it has a multi-benefit, like it can be an adaptogen for the immune system, but it also can help inhibit replication of viruses. Yeah, modulates the interleukin response and actually helps stimulate the natural killer cell response, which is really important. That's the first line of invaders. That, that's part of the reason why some of these viruses bounce off people because they have a really good Th1 immune response and, the, and these invaders can't even kind of set up shop to begin with. Yep. Absolutely. Olive leaf. I, I love olive leaf. You well, and I actually- I, I want to continue hitting some of the nutrients. So. All right, go ahead. So let's, let's do N-acetylcysteine. We talked about this last week in particular, but N-acetylcysteine is an amino acid. And it's also going to help with glutathione. So N-acetylcysteine is going to help with respiratory issues, mucus. It's going to support the lungs. N-acetylcysteine will also help with glutathione. And we know low glutathione is correlated to weaker immune response, inability to detoxify. And glutathione actually helps with lung health. So we know NAC is vital for glutathione. And then that's also going to make a huge difference on the lungs and the respiratory system. And NAC is also shown to be very helpful to decrease viral replication. So once the DNA of that virus invades your cell, it's going to replicate. And if it's replicating and we can put things in there to hit the brakes on that viral replication, that's going to help our immune system catch up. Yep. We could go into nutrients forever. I'm just thinking now my head's spinning. Uh, vitamin A, higher dose of vitamin A could be critically important. Higher dose vitamin D could be critically important. Maybe 10,000 IU for most people would be just fine for vitamin D. We always like to have K1 and K2 added to it. The funny thing is a lot of the things we're talking about, you and I do these all the time anyway for people. It's not like it's a different protocol. It's just this is kind of the baseline stuff. Like we use glutathione, NAC combo all the time. Now it just becomes a bit more important and you know, vitamin D, for example, has been shown to reduce the risk of flu, other respiratory infections, including pneumonia, which as you mentioned last time we talked about this, that's one of the main mechanisms that people are getting really, really ill is when it progresses to a point of pneumonia. So vitamin D alone has been shown to yeah. reduce the risk of that. Yeah. So let me go back and hit vitamin A according to what some of the research says, or zinc, I should say. Zinc is very helpful for modulating the Th1 immune response. It helps modulate cytokine production and B lymphocytes, which a lot of times uh, B cells are going to be the antibodies that we make. Uh, it also helps to decrease cell replication of the DNA of the virus, which is very helpful. And it also helps with apoptosis. So it helps with program cell death which is very important, right? We, we wanna keep a lot of these cells um, from replication, right? The more they replicate, the more it's gonna, um, it's gonna put more stress on our, our immune system to kill them. So that's really important. And then we also know the more zinc deficiency occurs, you know, the harder it is to decrease replications. We know zinc plays a big role. And then vitamin A is really important because number one, vitamin A plays a major, major role with the cell membrane. It makes that cell membrane stronger. And let's just say 
imagine like the cell membrane is kind of like the castle wall. It makes it harder for invaders like viruses to get into the cell. So adequate vitamin A is going to really help make that cell membrane nice and strong and more impervious to things coming in. Vitamin A also has an inflammatory role. It protects the epithelium. It protects the mucous membrane. So if the mucous membrane is stronger, that's going to prevent invaders from getting in that way. It also has an anti-inflammatory role. It's going to modulate cytokines as well. So a lot of really, really, really important things. Um, vitamin A is going to help. So zinc, vitamin A, we already talked about N-acetylcysteine and its effects on viral replication and glutathione and mucus and lung health. And then you mentioned vitamin D. And vitamin D makes a natural antibiotic called cathelicidin, which is antibacterial. It's going to modulate Th1 and Th2 immune response by helping the T regulatory cells. And, uh, and, and overall, it's going to just be supporting the immune system. Anything else you want to highlight on vitamin D, Evan? I mentioned the, the, the K1, K2. I don't know if it would have any role in immune health, but we often use it together. So I would just say if you're out looking at the store for a combo, the combo product is generally going to provide more value across the board than just a, a standard D3. And if you could go for something that's going to be like a soft gel or even a liquid, I've seen a lot of really low quality vitamin D supplements that are in tablets with a lot of fillers and binders. So you know, keep in mind, the nutrient is not just the important part. You want to make sure you're getting quality and try to use stuff that doesn't have a bunch of extra garbage added to it. Yeah, that makes sense. I'd also say lysine is a big one. We see it with herpes viruses, but it's been very, very helpful to modulate immune response. It helps deactivate a lot of the herpes viruses. It definitely plays a strong role in enhancing and strengthening um, the immune system. And it also helps with um, upregulating antibodies. So that B cell antibody, um, the B cells that make your IgG, IgA, IgM, those antibodies are going to be strongly enhanced with L-lysine. And so it's very, very helpful at modulating the immune system. And so the big, I think, nutrients that I would kind of highlight here, because we want to draw a line between nutrients and herbs, I would say vitamin A as an apple, vitamin D as in dog, vitamin C as in cat, zinc. We could throw L-lysine in there. And was there anything? And then zinc. I think that we hit all five or six, whether six or five. A, D, C, zinc, NAC. I think that's it. Those are the yep. big five. 